Something kind of crazy happened last weekend. The internet descended upon an online canvas of roughly 4 million pixels. Millions of people took part in the great social experiment known as r slash place. Art was made, wars were fought, and at its peak, it completely took over Twitch. Whether you missed it or made it, here's how it all happened. All right, guys, I spent a fairly large portion of my weekend watching this, mainly because I found it absolutely fascinating, but also because I knew I'd be making this video. So if you do enjoy it and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. We're almost at 2 million subscribers and you could help us get there. All right, then, if you're sitting comfortably, let's get started. The story begins with a software engineer called Josh Wardle. Josh is a former product manager at Reddit. In 2015, he helped create the social experiment game called The Button, which launched on April Fool's Day. Reddit users were presented with a button, which if pressed would reset a 60 second timer. Sounds pretty simple, but it absolutely captivated Reddit at the time. And then on April Fool's Day 2017, he followed it up with something even greater, a subreddit called r slash place, otherwise known simply as place. Oh, and he's also been known more recently as the guy who created Wordle. Yes, as in Wordle. He's been a busy bloke. Going back to place though, the idea was simple. There was a large white canvas in which users could change the color of one pixel every five to 20 minutes. For the next three days, over a million Reddit users from hundreds of different communities piled onto the canvas to add their pixels. What started out as crude drawings quickly evolved into elaborate pixel art, created and maintained by organized teams of people. But very quickly, people realized that place wasn't just about creating creating art, you had to defend it. Because anyone could change a pixel, if you wanted your art to stay intact, you and your team had to be on high alert. Now, we're not going into depth here about what happened after. Other channels have done that very well over the years. All you need to know, though, is that after 72 hours when this thing ended, people thought that was the end of place forever. Josh Wardle and Reddit gave no indication that Place would be returning, and so it became internet folklore. I somehow missed all of this at the time, and it became almost mythical to me. But five years later, last Friday to be exact, r slash Place returned on April Fool's Day once again, and the internet lost its shit. Everyone and their mum piled onto the canvas, including some of the biggest Twitch streamers on the planet, and almost immediately, there were some recognizable features from the original place. The Germans immediately started creating their canvas-spanning flag, and just like last time, a group who called themselves the Blue Corner did what their name would suggest and kept an entire corner blue. The ominous black voids began to appear in pockets too, threatening to swallow communities whole. Beautiful artwork began to pop up around the canvas. There were some stunning recreations of famous paintings by the Dutch, and there was also the ongoing hilarity of Canada not being able to get their leaf right for pretty much the duration of the event. There was even a group of Among Us fans who were hellbent on hiding their characters in everyone else's art. One favorite of mine was the group that made a working QR code which led people to get rickrolled. There was a lot of impressive stuff out there, but the question was, how long was it going to last? There was always going to be random people looking to grief someone's art, but by far the biggest threat on the canvas was streamers and their armies of followers. It's difficult to take over an area by yourself. The five minute cooldown between placing pixels means that large groups of people were extremely powerful. They could create or destroy in the blink of an eye. When it came to destruction, one name in particular seemed to stand out, XQC. He would lead his followers to create voice of black pixels that would stream across the canvas, swallowing anything in its way. Void it, void it. Up into this. Yep. Yeah, chat ch knows how to do it. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. Guys, next push, next push. And at peak XQC chaos, he broke his own personal streaming record to reach an astounding 233,000 concurrent viewers. And to be fair, he did create some pretty cool pieces of art with his community and really played the role of villain on the canvas quite well. Classic XQC stuff. 
Now at times, the destruction we've talked about was far more targeted. Looking across the canvas, you could see a lot of national flags, areas claimed by people for their country. These flags became the staging grounds for huge battles, like when XQC and his viewers tried to take on Turkey's flag because Hassan refused to ally with him. He is too big for his britches He's gonna take down Turkey? I don't think so, dude. He doesn't want the smoke from the Turkish army to come. <gasps> Amazingly, the Turkish community managed to defend their flag and push back XQC's attack. But the greatest battle was yet to come. Over the course of the weekend, the canvas had its size periodically increased. At the beginning of the third expansion, the French community quickly took up a large corner for their national flag. On top of being accused of hogging too much space on the canvas, the French were also accused by Spanish streamers of using bots. This argument quickly devolved into literal World War III. We attack the ratio because you, you type ratio of the French flag. Like, it's not respectful. Okay, okay, listen to me. It's not respectful to use scripts and bots. Don't use scripts and bots. Oh my God. No, I have two clips of you using scripts no, and bots. No, 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 but the script is to help people build. It's ah, like, okay, oh, dude. Mom, I'm about to go to war with, uh, I'm starting World War III right now with the French in Spain, but I just want to let you know I love you, okay? Okay, bye. Bye, wait, you don't want to ask if I'm going to die him. Bye. The battle lines were drawn. On the one side, the French community, hundreds of thousands of them led by their most prominent streamers. On the other, the Spanish were backed by big streamers like Ms. Kif and Hassan. Even XQC stopped his chaos to join in. The battle took place on the border between the French flag and the Hezbollah mural. The goal was simple. Give Hezbollah some legs and shoes, thereby claiming a large chunk of the French territory. Yeah, 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 yeah. But despite the best efforts of the attackers, the French defended their flag. There were more accusations of them botting, especially because some of the accounts they were using seemed to be very new. But Reddit is an American site. It is plausible that the French viewers simply created fresh accounts for the occasion. And this was just one battle in a larger war. A heat map posted to Reddit of the area shows just how much activity occurred there, with the creator claiming over 1 million users took part in this war alone. And that was just one storyline in one corner of the map. All over the canvas, there were countless battles, storylines, and creations going on between communities big and small. The creators of Place had told everyone that the whole thing would end on Monday the 4th of April, but they didn't specify exactly when or how it would happen. I myself was sat there doing some repairs on the Irish flag when suddenly I realized I could now only place white tiles, no more color. And slowly, it began to dawn on everyone. The creators had made it so that they weren't going to turn the canvas back into white again. We were going to do it for them. At first, there was a lot of confusion. What the f is happening with France? Who's doing this? That is insane! Everything is white! You can only put white! No, you can Stop. only put white! Every, every, yes, every that's line! Good. That's good! Take France! Oh my god! Wait, so then oh you can see god. which spots are botted. Oh, I mean, France is getting white very fast. France is, like, deleting itself. <laughs> France is deleting itself! In the space of an hour, millions of pixels and days of work had been wiped out. It was quite poetic seeing it return back to a white canvas once again. All right, chat in the middle, keep it up. This was a lot of fun, man. This was this was crazy. This was madness. Yeah. Also, I, I, I like it only lasts like five days, so it doesn't extend. People don't don't. Uh, it it was the perfect amount. Perfect length. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, this might have been one of the greatest streaming events ever. I highly recommend interactive maps like this one if you want to get detailed stories about every inch of the canvas. But for me, that was the big picture in all of its pixelated glory. So, what did this social experiment teach us? Well, not to sound too soppy, but people can do dope things if they work together. They can also be incredibly destructive, and people will go to literal World War III on a canvas to defend a few pixels. What does all of that mean? I don't know. People are probably writing video essays about the whole thing as I speak, but for now, it was strange, it was shocking, it was fun, and I think for many people, it was great to feel a part of something. To feel, if only for a weekend, that they had a place. Our place. 
You know what rate roll means. I literally don't. I'm not capping. Zero cap. You know, uh, never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. You had the phrase before. Well, I mean, see, now I'm feeling like I should explain it, but it's like, which is a process of tricking someone into watching Rick Astley's 1986 <laughs> music video, Never Gonna Give You Up.